Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another new pick a card reading for you guys. This one is all about who will I marry? I'm so excited for this video. I feel like this one's going to be so much fun. We're going to try to get into as much detail as possible, which is why I have some astro dice on the top here, because we're going to try to get their signs or a little bit more information about what they're like, stuff like that. So this is astrology dice. It has the houses, the signs, and the planets. So we're going to try to get more information from that as well. If you guys are new to pick a card readings, I'm going to give you guys a quick little rundown of how it works. So basically, this is pile number one, this is pile number two, this is pile number three, and this is pile number four. So you can take a moment to pause the video if you'd like to find the pile or card that you're the most drawn towards. If you guys like to pick with a more visual representation, I'll be putting some crystals on these cards in just a second so that you guys can have a little bit of a help to try to find which one you're the most drawn to. Um, but then once you're done picking your pile, you can scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card so that way you can skip ahead right to your specific reading. So if you guys like to pick with crystals, let's pop those on there right now. All right, so if you guys like to pick with crystals, here are our crystal options. We have bismuth, this is some blue tiger's eye, this is adventuring, and this is some argonite. So pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you're the most drawn to, and then without further ado, let's hop right into this tarot reading starting now. All right, so pile number one, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your reading all about who will you marry. So let's hop right into this reading starting now. All right, so pile number one, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we start off with the chariot. We have the queen of cups, the six of pentacles, and the ace of cups. The fact that the ace of cups comes up in here is like so exciting to me because this is usually, this comes up with a very deep love. This can sometimes indicate that it's the first love that you ever have um, that you end up marrying. It can, it can sometimes indicate that, uh, but not always. It usually just means that there's a very deep love connection here. But for some of you guys, again, it's a general reading, but for some of you guys, it means you'll marry the first person that you fall in love with. Um, when we have the six of pentacles here, this is somebody who really wants to take care of you. This is a very fair relationship. There's a very good balance here where you two, um, provide just as much for each other. You two kind of like really help each other out. You really uplift each other when we have that six of pentacles here. This can also indicate that the person that you're gonna marry is going to be somebody who wants to take care of you and you're able to just, you know, either stay at home and they actually go to work and stuff like that. And while you do the more homey kind of things, it can also indicate somebody that just really wants to take care of you in that aspect. But it's again, it's a very fair, um, kind of trade-off because you're still doing so much for this person as well. And we also have the Queen of Cups here. This is like somebody who wants to express their love and deep emotions to you, especially when we have the Ace of Cups as well. This is somebody who like wants that deep love with you. When we have the Chariot, this can sometimes indicate that um, there might be a part of our life where we go in two separate directions, but we always come back together because in the Chariot, usually it's um, represented by two different horses that are going in two different directions, but they're still pulling the same like chariot they're still pulling the same vehicle behind them so it indicates that you two are on the same path you guys have the same values and everything but you might differ in a lot of aspects as well but you're still able to come together and love each other at the end of the day um, even though there's quite a few differences between you two but you two are almost like each other's halves he's that half, you're this half, or she's that half, and you're this half, but you're able to complete the full circle together because you two are slightly different, but you two have like the same like core values where you're just wanting the same things out of life. Um, it can also sometimes indicate that you go, you guys um, separate for a little while. So it could mean that you guys have gone through a little bit of a hurdle where you two went off in two different directions at one point, but then end up coming back together. So it could, again, since we have the Ace of Cups here, meaning first love, it could mean that you end up marrying the first person that you fell in love with, even if you're not with them right now. We also have the card here of networker. This definitely makes me think that the person that you're going to marry is very sociable. Um, so there's somebody who probably has a lot of friends, has a lot of connections, they know a lot of people. They could also have a tendency to um, talk very much about uh, everything and anything that is in your guys' relationship. So they just could be very social and very open as a person to share information with people. But again, I feel like they're a very sociable person when you take them anywhere. They know how to make friends so quickly and so fast. Um, and there's somebody who probably is pretty high in business as well when we get networker. This is somebody who might even own their own business and just networks with a lot of different other companies or does something. Um, and they're very business savvy, basically. 
We also have the separation card right here. So um, again, kind of when I was talking about that you guys might have a, a separation at one point and then you guys end up coming back together, this card just kind of reiterates that. So it could be that you end up breaking up with this person at some point, but you end up getting back together and actually marrying this person. So that's definitely what I'm feeling from this pile is that you two will have some sort of break at some point, but um, or maybe you guys have already had this break and you guys are going to uh, marry that person. All right, and then we also have the card here of it is safe for you to love. And so, you know, maybe through that separation, it was maybe um, a daunting thing or it was a hard thing to go through. Of course, any separation is a hard thing to go through, but I do feel like you're going to uh, come back together with this person and be able to marry them. I also think this person's quite well known when we have the networker card. I just want to point that out as well. This person might um, have a lot of like public recognition of some kind when we have that as well. And um, just the card coming up, it is safe for you to love. It's just saying that this person is safe to be around. I don't think you guys are going to separate um, again in the future. This is just like a past separation or it could even mean a future separation between you two, but it's saying that you guys are going to get back together and it's going to be just fine. Um, but if you guys have already had that separation, it's just indicating and showing that, um, yes, you guys had that separation, but you're, you're going to marry this person if you haven't already. All right, and then we also have the Scarab Beetle Spirit. Magic works through you. So this is a very kind of like magical relationship between you two. I feel like um, when we have the Scarab Spirit that comes up, this is like, this is somebody who has a very magical connection with you. They're very, um, you know, they might even be... Um, very connected to you through like a past life when we have the scarab beetle because this is usually a very ancient beetle that we know from like ancient Egypt so it could indicate that you guys have had quite a few um, past lives together and again it's just a very magical connection between you two and it's like almost unexplainable how you two fit and work so well together even though you have maybe quite a few differences. Then we also have the fruitfulness card um, which is the red coral crystal. And then we also have Alexandrite, which is um, the good fortune crystal. So again, lots of good things in this pile. There's lots of beautiful um, cards here that indicate a very magical connection, cards that indicate that, you know, there's a very passionate relationship. The fruitful card makes me feel like this person definitely makes a lot of money since we have Networker and the Six of Pentacles here. This person probably, you know, owns their own business and is able to make quite a bit of money, which is always good. It's always a good thing because it's less for you to worry about. I also feel like you two will have a very fruitful fruitful relationship in every aspect, especially when it comes to your love, since we also have the Ace of Cups here, which is just a blooming blossoming love card and then um with the good fortune the fact that we have fruitfulness and good fortune really definitely re reiterates the fact that i totally believe you guys um are going to have such a beautiful fulfilling relationship and also one where you guys probably also make a lot of money together and have a lot um, of material wealth as well so i do feel like this person's going to um with you kind of like grow your fortunes together very materially and in spiritual ways and in love ways, every, pretty much in every single way. There's a lot of abundance here um, when we're talking about what you two are going to have together. And then also let's do our Astro Dice really quick and see kind of what comes up here if we can get some more information about this person. All right, so almost knocking out everything. So we have Saturn, which indicates always marriage. We have um, Pisces, and we also have the second house right here. So the second house always indicates, it's ruled by Taurus, so it always indicates a material abundance, material wealth. So again, I'm thinking you guys will have a lot of material wealth together. Saturn always indicates um, marriage. It also indicates some like restrictions, um, contracts, things like that, business even. So I do think this person, again, is going to be quite business savvy. But with Cancer being here, this kind of evens out the playing field and makes it very loving, a very safe place to love. Again, a marriage, probably a really fancy wedding as well, where there's a lot of guests or just a lot of like, you know, flowers, beautiful things at this wedding and stuff like that. And then again with cancer, this is a relationship where you guys just, there's such a deep love connection here. There's something that's so, so, so deep. Saturn can also indicate that you guys are very honest, very truthful with each other. Um, and then being in the second house, this can also indicate that maybe you guys, um, even though you're so wealthy, maybe you just, you know, you don't 
buy all of the crazy things because Saturn does indicate like you know trying to fit in with society be a little bit more societally correct stuff like that so maybe it's like you don't live so so extravagantly but yet or maybe you just like don't talk about it with the public but yet you guys have so much together um, but maybe you don't go and brag about it and stuff like that so that's always really good um, but yeah that that uh, cancer being right there as well is just so beautiful because this is a very cuddly open um, deep relationship that you guys are going to have together and it's going to be very beautiful I think and then also this person could be of a water sign when we have the water sign that comes up or they could be a Capricorn or Aquarius when we have Saturn or they could be a Taurus when we have the second house which is also another earth sign so um, I'm definitely seeing that for you guys so that is um, all that I see for you guys here I hope you guys enjoyed this reading if you did don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys in the next video bye all right, so pile number two, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your reading all about who you're going to marry. So let's hop right into this, starting now. All right, so pile number two, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we have the Page of Pentacles here, the Nine of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, and the King of Wands. So usually when we have the Page of Pentacles at first, this person is probably somebody that you're going to meet while you are in school or while you're in college, because the Page of Pentacles usually indicates that we're studying something. And so you might meet them um, during that time of your life, that period of your life when you're either in college or studying something or learning something. This can also be when we just begin a brand new job as well, so it can be any Thing around that so I feel like you pers uh, you <laughs> you are possibly going to meet them or most likely going to meet them um, either in school or when you first start a new job so when we had the nine of Pentacles next this is usually um, indicating that we're able to be quite financially free with this person or this person is quite financially free and quite abundant in what they have materially um, I see a lot of correlations also to pile number one so you guys might have also been drawn to pile number one before picking this certain pile um, most likely just because I see a lot of different correlations here um, that are similar to the first pile so we also have the seven of wands here. This is making me think that there might be a bit of a competitive nature between you two, where um, you two are always trying to like top each other or be the best or like get noticed. This person probably really wants to get noticed by you. And so they end up kind of showing off stuff like that, especially when we do have the king of wands as well. This is usually somebody who's a little bit showboaty or really just tries to get your attention in a very extravagant type of way. So this person definitely is into buying you really big gifts and stuff like that, especially when it's, when we we have the nine of pentacles here as well this is a somebody who really wants to win you over and so they're probably going to go out of their way to make big um, extravagant showcases of their love for you either taking you out to really fancy places or buying you really fancy items again there's a little bit of a competition where they always want to top themselves or they always want to be on the top for you um, they also might get a little bit jealous at times when we have the seven of wands this can be that they always see getting you as a competition and so they might always be fending off all the other suitors to try to prove themselves that they're the best that they deserve you kind of thing and again it's an, in a probably a little bit of a showboaty showcasey type of way when we have the king of wands as well so this is somebody who definitely um tries to win your attention they might have a bit of a jealous kind of thing going on um we do also have the Messiah, and so when this comes up, just based on the uh, past little bit that we had over here, I'm really feeling like this person um, might exaggerate quite a bit um, their love for you, but not in a bad way, not, not, not saying that they love you less than what they say. Um, it's just more like, they try to show, they do really extravagant things for you. I feel like they're gonna like just really, um, like, basically this is the type of person that on your first date they take you on a plane flying or something um but they're just for example like they just do very extravagant things um for you to like win you over um and i don't really think that they have much humility behind them they're just kind of like i'm just gonna be me which is great that's a great aspect to have when they're just themselves and they don't really you know give a f what anyone else thinks um so I think that they, they probably have a little bit of an ego, but I think it's fine um, <laughs> because everything else here is looking quite positive. I do think this person, you know, does, um, you know, make quite a good living, stuff like that. They're able to take care of you. They're able to treat you like a queen. Um, but when we have the release your ex card here and then you deserve love, this can mean that maybe you two have some sort of falling out at some point. And um, 
This is kind of what's making me feel like there might be some similarities between pile number one and this pile because this might be that um, maybe this can also indicate that maybe you meet this person right as you're breaking up with somebody else or you meet them while you're in a relationship with somebody else and they end up winning you over. Um, and maybe that's what the competitiveness here is because they're really trying to win you over and win your love. And so maybe you have to break up with a current partner in order to be with this person. It can also mean that maybe you two go through a little bit of a falling out at some point um, and then end up working it out and getting back together as well. So I'm definitely seeing that. I also see this person is really hunting for you. When I see this card, we have the bow and arrow over here. This person's really trying to get your attention and they have their eyes on you, they're locked on you and they think, you know, I only want this person, I have to get this person somehow. So I really feel like they're kind of competitive with you and they're really trying to get you and they see you almost as an angel when I see this. They're like, I have to get this person. Um, and then the next card that we have here is the Swan Spirit. And this says, it's time for a deep dive. So with this card, this makes me definitely feel like they see you as such a beautiful um, person. I think that this is also a very romantic relationship. The King of Wands is already a very romantic type of person. Um, but when we have the Swan Spirit over here, this is again like, swans are known as like the romance or like beautiful. Like when you see a swan, there's just such elegance to them. So I really think that this person has a big elegance to them. They love to dress themselves up. They love to look their best. They love to present themselves in a very um, vivacious, I think vivacious is the word I'm looking for. I'm not really sure. Just a very extravagant way, basically. And I really think this person loves to take care of themselves. They probably are a little bit attached to the material world. Um, but again, that's not a bad thing. It's not good nor bad, but they just are um, very, I think, materialistic, especially when it comes to how they look or the things that they have and how they try to win, win you over is going to be probably quite material. Um, but again, they're going to make you feel like a queen or king, who, uh, whichever. I always assume because like most of my audience is female, so I'm just like, you know, saying male, um, but it doesn't matter. This can be a female or a male. It goes in both cases since it is a general reading. We also have Picasso Jasper, which is nature. And then we also have Moonstone, which is rhythms over here. So with the Picasso Jasper um, being in nature, so this is like, um, I actually, for some reason, want to say nurture. Um, and I know it says nature, but for some reason, I keep getting the word nurture in my head. Like this person really wants to take care of you. Um, Cause I don't feel like this person is super connected to nature. I feel like this person is more connected to um, the material, but also with nature, this could mean that this person has very primal instincts where they just like want to ravish you and they want to, um, kind of almost like they have like a rugged sense to them, especially when it comes to probably like love making or like, um, anything around how to like win over and conquer a woman or man. Um, so this person just has a very like rugged, primal like primal sense to them where they just want to conquer and get and compete um they have that competitive like nature about them when we also have moonstone of rhythm this person might have certain patterns that they need to like let go of certain patterns that kind of come up it could be that um with this person it could be like a back and forth thing for a while where they always have to constantly conquer you or it could be that there's a little bit of an unhealthy thing going that once they get you they feel like they have you and so it ends up kind of falling apart where you two might end up breaking up quite a bit and then always getting back together because this person um, always needs to, again, conquer or achieve something or compete for something. And so it could be that there's a there's a pattern with that in your guys' relationship um, where they always feel like they're, they're not as in love unless they're conquering you in some type of way. So there could be a pattern around that. Um, or it could be just like, you know, there's a good rhythm between you two as well. So I'm also seeing that there's a there's a positive rhythm between you two. This is like a either you guys are really into music or you know, you guys are very connected because you guys always, you know, desire to do the same things at the same time. There's like a good kind of like energetic back and forth kind of rhythm between you guys. Let's see what our astro dice have to add on to this reading. All right, so we have the sun, we have the sixth house, 
And we also have cancer. So the first pile also had cancer. So I'm seeing a lot of similarities between this pile and the first pile. So if you guys were also attracted to the per first pile, I'd also suggest watching that because there might be some more information in there for you guys. Um, but we do have the sun. So when this comes up, this is like very illuminated. This person could also probably be um, a fire sign as well because the sun usually correlates to Leo and the king of wands also correlates to Leo or just a fire sign in general which would be Aries, Sagittarius or Leo. The sixth house is um, ruled by Virgo and Cancer is obviously ruled by Cancer. So they could be a water sign or um, a Virgo as well. That's always an option when we have these coming up. Um, so with the sun, this is like a very illuminated relationship. Things are very authentic between you two. This person's very honest about how they feel and about who they are. There's a good honesty over here. Um, with the sixth house, this is somebody who wants to work very hard. This is somebody who wants to have that competition, who wants like the most perfect relationship, especially when there's um, that Leo kind of energy here as well. This person definitely wants like a very extravagant, very beautiful relationship. Again, they probably are attached to the material world when we have the sixth house here. But with cancer, this person also loves so deeply. They just want to be cuddled. They just want to be loved. They just want to wake up next to their love and feel so good. Um, and this person also has a, a very emotional side, even though they probably don't let it on very often because they want to have that, you know, very um, probably like domineering, like, attitude, but they actually are kind of like a little uh, puppy on the inside when <laughs> we have the uh, cancer sign over here. Um, this can also mean that this person really loves what they do for their job. It can also mean that they work in a very creative job where they get to be creative in some type of way or some type of aspect here. Um, when we have the sun, this is somebody who could even be um, well recognized for what they do, um, and but they also like to be the center of attention as well, or they like to um, show you off as the center of attention and stuff like that. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys, pile number two. Hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. All right, so my third pile, if you guys chose this pile, this is all about who you're gonna marry. So let's hop right into it, starting now. All right, so pile number three, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we have the universe right here, which is basically the world in regular tarot. Um, then we have the five of swords, death, and the empress. So for you guys, when we have the universe here, this is like, this person really completes us. This makes, <laughs> this person makes us feel whole. This can also indicate that we meet this person um, right as we're like stepping into our truest selves, our fullest selves, or when we're feeling at our fullest. Um, but when we have the five of swords next to this, this can sometimes indicate that maybe Maybe we went through a hard time, maybe we had recently just got cheated on, or um, they're going to help us kind of like step into our best versions of ourselves and really point out some of our flaws and help us become the best person that we can be. Sometimes the Five of Swords can also indicate that this person has kind of like cheated us in some way, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they cheat on you, but it could be that... Um, Maybe you feel sometimes taken for granted by this person or maybe they don't fully express their emotions to you, but they're like, they're like your world basically. And they also think the world of you, but maybe they just have a hard time expressing that in some type of way. Um, or it just could be that there, there's still some like insecurities in this relationship, either from them or from you. But when we have the death and the empress card, this can um, sometimes indicate that you get like accidentally pregnant by this person. And so... Um, or that you, again, if you're a male watching this, maybe you accidentally get someone else pregnant. Again, I, I'm more um, uh, catered towards, or I don't want to say I cater towards because I, I don't, but sometimes I accidentally always refer to um, like significant others as males just because most of my audience is female. So I just want to point that out. So if you guys are a male that's watching this, I'm not leaving you guys out. I promise I love you guys so much and thank you for being here. Um, but I just want to point out that sometimes I accidentally always... Um, you know, talk about the the uh, males that we're meeting when we talk about significant others because just most of my audience is female. But I promise I haven't forgotten about you guys that also watch my videos that are um, male. So again, this can go either way, no matter what sexual orientation you are or anything like that. So just kind of uh, replace my he or she if need be. 
So um, again, I'm seeing that there might be an accidental pregnancy here because the Empress always um, is a pregnant woman and she's a mother and stuff like that. And we have the death card right near it. This is usually indicating that we go through a major change or a major transformation. And so this person, when they come into your life, they're going to transform you completely. And they're, you know, you might have been somebody with a bunch of insecurities, but they kind of really complete you and take away a lot of those insecurities from you. But again, usually when we meet somebody that helps us get over our insecurities, Insecurities, it's because at first they bring out those insecurities a lot for us to actually fully face them and finally, you know, um, break through the insecurities. So I do want to point that out for you guys. Um, so at first, again, this person might bring out some of our insecurities, but they end up healing them in the end because they help us feel complete and whole. And again, huge transformations because of this person. They're going to help you transform completely into the person that you're really supposed to be. And they're going to inspire you to become the person that you're truly supposed to be. And finally, truly step up for yourself, speak your mind, stuff like that. Um, and then with the Empress, they're going to either really inspire us to fully completely step into ourselves. They're also very nurturing as well. When we have the Empress card, they bring out our nurturing side where we just really want to take care of this person and we really want to love them very deeply. But again, I do see that um, there could be an accidental pregnancy before you guys are actually married or it just could be that um, you guys will absolutely have children with this person. So children are a big thing for you guys, um, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, for most of you, I'm feeling like it's a... It's an accident pregnancy, but at the same time, it ends up being a beautiful thing in the end. I do want to say that, like, it ends up being a beautiful thing. We do also have the lover card right here. And so this, again, kind of shows me that, you know, there's a very deep love connection. I feel like, again, usually when we talk about lover, it's a very passionate sexual type relationship. Um, and usually that leads to babies sometimes. So I'm definitely feeling, again, like there's probably going to be... Um, like a unplanned pregnancy, but it doesn't always have to be that way. I do want to point that out. Again, it's a general reading, but for the most, for the most part, for most of you watching this, I do see that coming for you guys. Um, but it's not going to turn out to be a bad thing. It's going to be a really beautiful thing. I do want to, again, point that out. But this person is going to just like transform you so much with love. I think they're going to love you in a way that you've never felt before. Um, and again, it's going to be very passionate, very passionate relationship. We also have the let your friends help you card and forgiving and learning. So when we have these cards, the friend card right here makes me think that you're probably going to meet this person through mutual friends or that you start off as friends and then get into a loving relationship. But um, for the most part, I'm feeling that you guys are going to meet this person through your friend group. So, um, and I also think that, you know, your friends are going to help you kind of sort out this relationship, especially when we have the five of swords right here. This can mean that um, we end up, you know, having certain things that we really need to get off our chest that we really need to talk about. We don't know how to fix certain things in our relationship. It could mean that they're one of your first ever um, relationships and maybe you don't know how to exactly um, navigate relationships yet. So you end up, you know, going to your friends for a lot of advice and it ends up being a good thing. Uh, I do see a lot of forgiving and learning in this relationship. So this is a very growth oriented relationship where you guys will learn a lot together. There might be certain, um, like, I don't want to say fights or, you know, kind of like arguments that you guys might get into where you um, do have to sort through a lot of things. And again, most relationships are like that anyway. So it's nothing new. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing bad. Most, relationship, there's, most relationships, there's always like certain um, things that we need to work out. But this forgiving and learning is really like you two grow so, so, so much together. And there might be certain things that you know, might make you mad about the other person at first. But um, again, it's going to always go to a good point of forgiveness and then growth, um, huge, huge personal growth in this relationship for both of you. We also have the ant spirit right here, which says time to collaborate. So again, this is again, kind of making me feel like you guys are almost like nurturing the same seed, which makes me feel like, again, a little bit about um, like getting pregnant right away with this person. The time to collaborate card is also like with the ant spirit. I feel like you two um, are going to build such a strong future together. You guys are going to fully take care of each other in a beautiful way. You two are going to take on equal responsibility in the relationship. Um, I also feel like 
when you're pregnant, this person's gonna take care of you so, so, so well and so deeply um, because usually with ants, um, there's, I believe that there's one like queen ant or whatever that they end up, you know, really taking care of and every ant really takes care of that, that person. So again, I feel like this person's going to treat you like a queen and really want to take care of you um, and do a lot of things for you. Also with the collaboration, um, uh, aspect of this card again you two take on equal responsibility and you two are very fair with each other there's a huge fairness um, and I think you two again lift each other up and you two are very hardworking. so I do see you guys being a very hardworking couple that you know wants the best and really you know you guys have good strong work ethic together and there's a lot that you two get through and a lot of t a lot of things that you guys end up building together so I do feel like um, you guys will build a very strong relationship. You guys will build a very strong family together. And again, I feel like it's very, um, it's very beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> I do want to point that out. We do also have the turquoise card, which is friendship. Again, we have the friends card right here and friends over here, which is crazy how um, tarot can like, you know, have so much synchronicity sometimes. So with this, again, I feel like you guys are gonna meet because of mutual friends. I also feel like you're going to be always surrounded by a lot of friends where you two just love, you know, going out together with friends a lot. Um, you two just really enjoy each other's company. You guys, again, might start off as friends or you two will just have such a, steep, uh, such a strong, deep connection that you two are always each other's best friend and lover at the same time. We also have the calmness card right here. So again, I feel like you two, um, it might start off a little bit hectic, a little bit crazy in your guys' relationship and a lot of forgiving and learning, um, but it comes to a point of like total peace with each other, total calmness, total serenity, um, and you two just, you know, you love being together. There's a beautiful aspect about being together and I'm really seeing that for you guys. So there's a lot of like, there's a beautiful, there's lots of beautiful aspects of this. All right, let's do the Astro Dice and see what kind of more information we can get for you guys. All right, so we have the Sun, we have Libra, and we have the first house. Whoops, the first house right there. Okay, so with the Sun, this can mean that this person is a Leo or one of you guys is a Leo or a fire sign of some kind. When we have Libra, this always indicates marriage and a beautiful, balanced relationship, but it also could mean that this person is of um, an air sign or a Libra. When we have the first house, this indicates Aries. Uh, so this person could be an Aries, Leo, or Libra, um, or one of you guys could just have a lot of those um, similarities or aspects in your guys' chart. So at first, I feel like you guys will be, when you guys meet, it might be very young, or you guys might just jump into it very quickly. Things happen very quickly where you dive in head first. You don't really think about um, the outcomes. So maybe that's why there's an accidental pregnancy, because usually that happens with a lot of Aries people. <laughs> Um, or Libras because Libras are also very spontaneous um, but they also add a lot of balance and so I feel like eventually you guys are gonna get to a point of a lot of balance after always rushing into things so you guys might get off um, really quickly where you guys enter a relationship really fast you guys might do a lot of things together really spontaneously move in together very fast but there's like a beautiful balance aspect to this relationship also with the Sun this adds good fortune positivity everywhere where it where it is and so um, you two are going to be each other's main focus. I think that there's going to eventually become like a lot of balance and just a lot of like beautiful, spontaneous energy between you two, a very fun, fiery, but yet balanced um, energy because the sun is fire and the first house is fire. So this is, you know, a lot of fiery, fiery kind of stuff. It could also be that both of you want to get your way and your way only. And so you guys might butt heads at times because with Aries, they usually, you know, they want their way or the highway basically and so I feel like for you guys um, you're two peas of the same pod where you guys both just want to get your way and you might butt heads at times uh, with a little bit of stubbornness because both of you want your way um, but then there ends up becoming a balance uh, later on and a calmness later on once you guys um, kind of work through some of your guys' stuff. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys, pile number three. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right, so pile number four, if you guys chose this pile, this is gonna be your reading all about who you're going to marry. So let's find out what is underneath this pile, starting now. 
All right, so pile number four, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So um, the person that you're going to marry, they might come from a little bit of um, a harsher past with love, and so they might come into this relationship um, with a few insecurities because of past hurt. It also could be you guys entering the relationship um, just getting out of something that has probably hurt you in the past. When we have the two of pentacles, this is like this person might look at you on a pedestal or you might look at them on a pedestal. Could go either way, but this is kind of like putting somebody else on a pedestal um, and feeling like they're too good for you. And so they might be feeling that way about you or it could be mutual. You two feel that way about each other. Um, but there's a huge spiritual deep connection between you two. And with the nine of wands here, this is like usually indicates that this person has been hurt from the past and so they're a little bit cautious at first but yet they're ready um, but yet they're also cautious at the same time so this person probably comes into the relationship with maybe a few different insecurities or it could be that you're coming into the relationship with a few different insecurities because of the past and how the past has might have hurt you in love and um maybe you feel a little bit lower or they just feel a little bit lower. Again, it could also be that you both are feeling this way when you guys enter this relationship and maybe you guys connect on this level because of being hurt from the past and being hurt from love in the past makes you to um, immediately connect and understand each other and be able to transform your lives and transform your views of love because you two both come from the same place and are both wanting the same things in a new relationship. So. I feel like you guys are going to deeply connect on this level. I also feel like um, maybe one of you is, has been a bit further on in life or maybe with the Two of Pentacles, it can sometimes indicate that somebody is, um, there's a big age gap between you two as well, it can sometimes indicate that, but it doesn't always have to be that. Again, it's a general reading, so I'm just pointing out a couple different things that I see here. But again, I feel like this person is probably quite a bit older than you when we have the Nine of Wands and the Two of Pentacles. I feel like they've had just a little bit more life experience, but at the same time, I feel like you two relate on such a deep level that um, there's such a beautiful, strong connection between you two because I feel like you two are almost at the same place um, in life, although they, they might be a bit older. When we have the Virgin card right here, this could be that we meet them while we're very young, um, or it could just mean that this is a relationship that we've never had. We've never had this type of relationship before. It's something totally new. It's something totally different, and it makes us feel like a little kid again. It could also mean that this person brings out our young side as well, um, where they kind of bring out uh, our little kid feelings or like, you know, that those... Um, kind of like almost like a high school romance type thing or like um, just a little kid romance because they make us feel like we're young again or they make us feel like um, it's just that giddy type of like ooh type of love that we just haven't felt or we haven't even felt before. It could be a love that we've never ever felt before and it could be that this this person is quite different than the people that we used to date and so we again feel like we're virgins to the situation. But it could also mean that they're, they're your first love as well. Could also mean that as well. We do also have the card here of retreat. So again, I feel like you two um, are going to, when you two meet each other, it's almost like it's just you two that exist. And you two will spend so much time together where you might forget about your friends and family for a little bit because you two want to be together so much. And you two relate so much that it's like you guys always want to be just talking together and in your guys' presence together. And it's almost like when you two are together, the whole world fades away also see that you guys are probably going to travel quite a bit as well with this retreat card. Um, it could mean that you guys are definitely going to travel a lot. We do also have the reconciliation card, and this always comes up when um, either we have a falling out together and we reconcile with this person, um, or there's times that we you know, fall apart but then we get back together. It could also indicate that... Um, they help kind of like reconcile our past and so maybe in our past we've had a lot of hurt and they come in and make us feel whole again and they make us really trust in love again and they make us trust that you know this person can be trusted so they help kind of heal and mend our heart um so that's the definitely the kind of vibes that i'm getting from this person is somebody who heals you very very deeply um and makes you feel very good and helps heal trust issues helps heal like um hurt and helps us be able to open up again. We also have the turkey spirit over here. So this automatically, this card makes me feel like this person either really loves to cook, um, really likes to be kind of like festive with you. Immediately I got that kind of like um, feeling from this card. Again, this person might also be somebody who doesn't sleep very often or they have trouble sleeping because, uh, you know, turkeys are... Um, 
I believe they're the ones that, or is it a rooster that always like makes noise in the morning? I forgot. Either way, I feel like this person is an early riser. I feel like they also love food. They love having a good time. They always love like doing romantic things with you. Um, also, this card says give with gratitude and grace. So I feel like, again, this person is going to be so grateful for you entering their lives. And I feel like you're going to be so grateful for them. And there's like this beautiful like connection that you two have where you two heal each other and you guys heal the pasts that you guys have had. We do also have the card here of clarity and compromise and then emotional purity. So clarity and compromise, I feel like this, again, you guys are going to have a very authentic relationship where you two are very, um, you guys trust each other so much and it's the first time where you feel like you can fully trust somebody and open up your heart and have um, this great amount of clarity, but I feel like it's going to come with time as this person shows you that they're a person that you can actually trust. Um, with the compromise card, this person is willing to do things for you, they're willing to change for you, they're willing to be a different way for you. And so it could be that, you know, at first you guys need to change up a couple of things about your lifestyles in order to really fit together. But I feel like this person is more than willing to do that for you. And then we also have emotional purity here. This is finally a relationship that will offer that emotional purity that will offer um, like being authentic with their emotions and also being very trustworthy with their emotions. They're not always going to flip flop. So it's finally like a person that you can fully trust and fully open your heart to, which is going to be probably why you marry them because you know, you're able to fully open yourself to them. So let's do the Astro Dice and find out what kind of more information we can find out about this person. All right. So we have Uranus, we have Capricorn and we have the second house here. So the second house can mean that, um, again, it's kind of like material abundance with Taurus. Um, cause, uh, the second house rules Taurus. So this person could be a Taurus. I feel like there's a lot of humor between you two. Um, there's a really funny connection that you guys have. You're able to make each other laugh very deeply. And this person's able to make you laugh, um, so much because Tauruses are always very funny. So the second house is usually very humorous. Um, when we have Capricorn as well, this person is very hardworking. The second house and Capricorn, this person, um, as well could be a Capricorn. Um, but this person works very hard. You know, they work very hard for their money. They work very hard for the things that they have. And so they, they very much respect um, getting you because I think they're, they're so used to working very hard for everything in their life. And then with you two, I think things just come and happen so easily. When we have Uranus, I feel like you guys are going to meet in such an unexpected way. Usually, um, so Uranus is ruled by Aquarius and it's just, it rules all, all of the unexpected stuff. So again, this person could also be an Aquarius based on the um, signs that are coming up here. But um, I'm definitely feeling like this person is quite spontaneous. Um, they're quite fun to be around. Again, um, Uranus is like, usually they have like a very interesting humor about them. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a dark humor when we have Capricorn in there. But um, yeah, this person is, you know, very funny, very spontaneous. I do feel like you guys are going to meet in a very unexpected way. So it's something that's not very normal. It could be that you guys meet online because uh, Uranus does rule like the internet and stuff like that. So you guys may meet over the internet um, or while you guys are traveling or something that's just quite unexpected or um, not very normal. And I know the internet is very, it's a very normal way to meet people now. But again, Aquarius does rule like the internet and stuff and Uranus kind of rules the internet and stuff. So, um, I'm definitely seeing that or just some sort of unexpected way. And I feel like you two are going to complete each other on such a deep level. It's going to be such a beautiful relationship. Um, I do see that again, like this is a very hardworking person. Um, yeah very unexpected. I feel like they're going to love to surprise you as well when you have the second house and Uranus and Capricorn. I feel like they're going to love to surprise you with gifts um, or they're going to love to surprise you with certain things, maybe certain vacations they're going to surprise you with or like road trips, stuff like that. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys. Pile number four. Hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!